Hello everybody, hope you had a really good half term and you're ready to crack on with a bit more on political ideas. So this week we are going to do a little bit more consolidation on liberalism and we're going to start getting into a bit more detail on socialism. So I'm going to start off by reflecting on some of the work from last week uh, and I'm actually going to uh, be sharing some of the stuff that you produced for me and talking about that. And then I'm going to move on to the latest tasks on socialism. Right. So, as I've just said, we're going to look at some of the tasks from last week, move on to some socialism stuff. Um, there is also going to be the great excitement of another liberalism essay uh, for you to do, but I am going to go through that one a uh, bit by bit later in this video. Um, what I've seen so far suggests that people are getting a good grasp on liberalism and its key thinkers, and, and, and you're showing some really good thoughts and understanding on that. And what we just need to do is kind of move that on into the ability to, to write about it. Some of you have got it absolutely nailed, and some of you would just need to, I think, build the confidence on that a little bit more. Right. So last week's task two was a, a model essay, uh, and, and it was um, very good and, and very coherent, and it wrote to the point, and it brought in um, key thinkers. And what I ask you to do is I ask you to look at the mark scheme for a, um, a 24 mark political ideas essay and judge where you thought it was. And I'm going to just look at a, a couple of, well, I'm going to look at three examples that, that students um, wrote about it and the marks that they suggested it was. Um, see if you can spot it if it's yours uh, and claim credit in the comment section below. Right, so the, the first one said borderline level three, level four. Um, Comparing discriminants and, and discriminants is absolutely right. They're absolutely doing that. Uh, the, the student here was a little bit worried about the depth on the answer. Uh, and now that's something we can get a bit because the um, the essays for political ideas are 24 mark essays compared to the 30 mark essays that we've been looking at from the earlier part of the course. So maybe there is a, a slight difference here in terms of what they're expecting in terms of depth. Um, they, they rightly point out they're missing things like positive and negative freedom, which is a key part of liberalism. So it's not perfect in that way, absolutely. Um, and that they, there could be some better links back to the question. Uh, and there's a bit in terms of, of potential format. And that this is quite helpful, actually, because I, what we look at is, is the way that is the ideal way of doing it is splitting paragraphs into uh, pro, and, pro and against. But this does actually show a different way of doing it, where you kind of um, you combine the two, where you have point and counterpoint within uh, the essay, which a lot of um, the um, examples I've seen from the example, they seem to like this, this method of doing it. where you are doing point and counterpoint together in a single paragraph. As this one rightly points out, there's um, some really good definitions and some good support and there's really good overall knowledge on the theme. So that's our first one that's saying level three, level four, well, it's somewhere lying in between there. Our second one is more definitive in, in saying, well, this is a little bit better than the first one saying this is it's saying it, it is level four. Uh, accurate knowledge, a good understanding of concepts, which again shows really good use of the, uh, the mark scheme, what you're being asked about the concepts and, and political ideas, uh, able to use political uh, uh, key thinkers. Um, comparison between modern and, and classical liberal thinkers, which is really good. Similarities and differences between them. Use four of the five key thinkers, um, able to, to cover and, and, and show their understanding of the question. Um, <clears throat> and the only real fault um, that they kind of really pick up on it is the conclusion. And, and the conclusion isn't hugely full. It's not, it's not really big and chunky. And I think that's what's taken it got this student thinking, well, it's a good essay, but I'm not sure I'm going to be going right into that top level and probably not even to the right to the top of, of level four. So a really good essay, but I, they, they're saying they'd like a bit more judgment to push it right to the top. Right. Our third student disagrees and they go, well, this is level five, which is is the uh, the top level. Um, In-depth knowledge, understanding of concepts and theories and issues, again, showing a really good um, attention to the mark scheme there. Uh, full and relevant evaluation, um, effectively substantiated arguments and judgments. And I'd agree with that. I think this is a very convincingly written answer. Fully focused, justified conclusions. 
So the, maybe there's a bit of a disagreement here between the third student response and the second student response in terms of how much is required in that final conclusion. So they've gone in level five and they've, they've, they've gone in around uh, 20 to 22 marks. So we've we've got general agreement. This is a really quite a good essay. And when we've got a range of marks uh, going through our, our three respondents, and, and this, these were quite reflective of the different stuff that I had in from people going from kind of that top end level three, low end level four through into uh, the, the uh, level five. Right. So I'm sure you're all on the edge of your seat. What is the answer? Well, I can see the flaws that are pointed out by student one, but this is one of the um, the things that's a bit different in, in subjects like politics in, in that you can still do really well without absolute perfection. And in fact, it, you rarely see perfection. Um, student two makes some good points, especially about the conclusion, which I when I first saw, um, I thought was a bit thin. Um, they 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 talk about how they they've used the key things, and one of the key things to remember is that the that the example is saying right, you must use three key thinkers. So there's no necessity to use um, all five. Student three, I thought, showed some really good insight and picked up on this idea of chains of reasoning and how convincing the overall answer is. Now, when I first read it, um, this answer, I was debating between the top of level four and lower level five. Now, one of the things that was really interesting is this um, this was discussed on a uh, this particular essay was discussed on a, um, a politics teacher uh, forum um, on social media. Uh, and the the most commonly given mark for it was actually four marks, 24 out of 24. So this is a really good model for us to look at uh, and to think, well, that is what a an answer that is going to absolutely nailed on get me a really really good mark because this is an a star essay but it's not absolutely perfect even though uh, most um, most people marking say I, I would give it full marks and i don't think it's beyond what any of you could what any of you can do it's not it's not i don't think people were looking at this and going just wow this is above and beyond anything I understand. People are making really, really good uh, critical points about it. And I think this is a really good thing for us to use going forward when we're writing our own essays and going back to this and going, right, what does a really good political ideas essay look like? Right. Another one of the tasks I set you last week is um, task four, where I, I gave you um, an essay plan and asked you to, to kind of fill in the blanks. Uh, and this was uh, the essay, not the one that you did, but uh, the essay where I just asked you to do a bit of planning uh, that looked at the extent to which modern and classical liberals agree over the role of the state. Now, there are two um, sides to the argument. I mean, all um, liberals agree the state is necessary to guarantee freedom. Uh, liberals aren't anarchists. They don't argue uh, against the need for the state. Uh, and we can see this from the writings of Mill. Uh, the they believe that the state should emerge by consent, which goes back to the father of liberalism, Locke, uh, and the, they they suggest that the the state has an important role in things like maintaining order. Again, going back to the ideas of Locke, but there are some differences between uh, li modern and classical liberals. So classical liberals talk about the night nightman watch state, and I saw a lot of people um, use that in their planning. They use that that exact statement. Um, which is shown by their commitment to free market economics. So they, they really want, they're a bit suspicious of the state, the classical liberals, well, they're, they're very suspicious of the state. And so they don't want it doing very much. Now, the modern liberals have a very different view of the state and that they, they want to see an enabling state, a state that helps free individuals. And they believe in, well, some modern liberals like rules believe in things like Keynesian economics uh, and that the, the state needs to do stuff to help uh, individuals achieve greater freedom and fulfill their potential. So we've definitely got two sides to an argument here. Right. So here we're looking at agreement. So this is the stuff that the liberals agree on. So they, they agree that, that the state's role is in part to prevent harm to others. Um, so they get they make sure the, the, the state gets gives as much freedom as possible to as many people as possible. Um, and so preventing harm is a key a key element of the state. And, and there are differences in in how it does it between the two. But fundamentally, they agree on that. There's this idea of a social contract, which, which is a, a key element of, uh, of liberal writing. 
Uh, and it, it's voluntary that the, the state will look after the citizens and the citizens will obey the state. Um, and this, this, again, is something that exists in classical liberalism, the idea of a social contract, and it continues to exist uh, in, in modern liberalism. It, it changes slightly in exactly what it does, but it is there going all the way through it. So that, that's something that really rests at the heart of liberalism. And then fundamentally, we go back to, to, to this idea that they agree the state must exist and it must uphold um, law and order because in chaos, in anarchy, then you don't have freedom. Um, and so to, ha to have individual freedom, you have to have a state, have to, have a state to maintain it. Uh, and they absolutely agree, both modern and classical liberals, that the state should do nothing to impinge or, or to stop that individual freedom. Um, and that's kind of the fundamental of it. Uh, and it really does make a, a kind of a, a big, big start or a big, a big half of an essay, these key points, which show that there is something inherently central in liberal feelings when it comes to the state. However, of course, there are also lots of areas in which they disagree. So this is the disagreement side. So. This idea of preventing harm to others, it, there is a bit of a difference here because the classical levels are deeply, deeply suspicious about the state. So they see the potential of the state doing evil. And this is because when the right time of the writing of Locke and Mill, there were states that there were. We had lots of autocracy and they were, this is what they were trying to push for. We hadn't got lots of full blown democracy going on at the time. Now, the real difference with the modern liberals is they, they see the state as having potential to do good. So rather than worrying about it doing harm, they seeing it as a potential to do good. Uh, and that that is particularly picked up by on by Rawls. And so he's a really key thinker to bring in this because he starts to change the, the degree to which the state is acting in terms of liberal thought. Now. The other area they disagree is, is on the, the state's role with the economy. Now, classical liberals be believe fundamentally in the free market economics, and, and essentially the economy is an area that the state should stay out of, whereas modern liberals increasingly believed in state intervention, for example, Keynesian economics. Uh, Rawls is, again, probably the strongest examples of this. And therefore, you can say, well, fundamentally, they disagree on a key aspect of the role of the state. So a classical liberal would say, stay out of the economy. A modern liberal would say, get involved. And if you want to bring in your neoliberals in, then your neoliberal would be like your, your classical liberal and would be going, right, actually, we shouldn't be getting involved in that element of um, society. We shouldn't get involved in the economy. Now, <clears throat> there's this other area, which is about whether a state can actually enhance freedom. And, and really, classical liberals don't think it, it can particularly. Um, where what they see, they always see the state as a limit and they're worried about tyranny and they worry about it being difficult. And we see this a lot of the paranoia about government in America. But a, a modern liberal, and we saw a lot, saw a lot more of these in Britain and in, in, in Europe, they, they're saying, well, actually, it can really enhance the freedom of the individual. And we see a lot of stuff done here on, on equality of opportunity. Uh, and again, the, the, the ideas of rules can be seen as being fundamentally opposed to the writing of Locke and Mills from earlier periods. Um, so there's plenty in there um, to really um, kind of get your teeth into in terms of the, the role of the state. Um, and of course, another element of the, the role of the state would be in terms of um, the protection of minority, minority groups and um, also, one of the big ones in terms of the key thinkers is bringing in uh, women's rights and the uh, the workings of our last two thinkers. So there really is plenty of stuff in there to help you do that essay. So task one um, this week is to have a go and write that essay. So using the stuff I've just been going through, uh, using um, the planning document that you had last week or the week before half term uh, that you've already filled bits in. The other key bits to be doing is to go back and watch again. Watch the video on liberalism and the state, because that's going to go through a load of this stuff again. Um, watch the video again on different types of liberalism. So that's going to help you get your, your head round again, modern liberalism and classical liberalism. And watch your, the video again on the key thinkers, because uh, that's going to give you bits that you can bring in and use 
in terms of examples of their thought. So use this video, use the plan that you've you've had from um, the, the last set of stuff that I sent out, and then also go back and use those three videos, and it should hopefully uh, be fairly straightforward. If it isn't, then please get back in contact with me. Okay. The rest of the stuff that you're going to be doing, I'm hoping you're going to enjoy doing. It should be nice and interesting. We're doing, uh, we're building on knowledge on socialism. We're going to do three bits. So um, task two is looking at human nature. Um, so why why are socialists so optimistic about human nature? Uh, so, socialists believe that human nature is plastic. Well, what does that mean? Um, and then we're thinking about some real assessment of it. Do you share socialist belief about human nature? And I want you to really give me some detail and explanation of that. And then I want again, we're looking at divisions over human nature, because if you think going forward, whilst I'm, this week you're doing an essay on different views on the um, on the state between liberals, a potential essay you might get in an exam might look at how socialists disagree with each other over human nature. So is there much of a divide? Uh, on there. So again, should be good, interesting stuff. Watch uh, my video on um, socialism and human nature. The, the, those questions go through the video, so it should be fairly straightforward. Very similar um, with the second one. So this time it's looking at society. Uh, watch the video, and the, again, these questions follow through it. Does society, does the society people live in and their position in society shape them? So are, are we essentially, essentially um, created by the society we live in, which is very much a, a nurture over nature argument. Um, the next one is about classes, class and class struggle still relevant in modern society. So, some, so a lot of the original socialist thought was very much focused around this, uh, less, less so with some of the more recent stuff. Well, actually, is is that really important? I want you to, get, again, explain your answer as fully as you can. A really important idea from socialists in terms of society is this idea of social justice. And again, do you agree with it? Make sure you explain what it is and then why you agree or disagree with it and try and give some examples and some detail on that. Then one of the last things I look at in the video is some of the extreme examples of societies uh, created under socialism. So the USSR and then the Cultural Revolution in China. Now, do they prove that a socialist society would never really be a truly free one? And again, Use your um, use the stuff in the video. Uh, bring in examples. Think about it. Do you agree with that? And I want you to really um, explain your answer as fully as you can. Right. So the final one then is task four. It's similar again. This time it's the socialism and the economy video. So uh, socialists or some socialists essentially argue that capitalism is fatally flawed and that has to be got rid of. Again, do you think capitalism is fatally flawed? Uh, if you do or don't, I want you, what I want you to do is I want you to bring examples in to try and prove your case. So think about the modern world. Think about the things happening around you. Do they show capitalism is fine and, and will always survive? Or do they show capitalism is deeply flawed and, and should be got rid of? Right. Then along similar lines, do socialists today have to accept the continuation of some capitalism and fully explain your answer? And part of this is because different types of socialism accepts capitalism to varying degrees from not at all to a, a very significant amount if you get all the way through to the third way. Right, the next one is asking you to look at the idea of collectivism. Um, again, you need to uh, watch the video, you need to be able to explain what it is and then fully explain your answer. Do you, do you think collectivism is a better idea than the other ideas in terms of um, running an economy? <clears throat> and then these, we've got this common ground question again. So how much common ground is there amongst socialists about the economy? Again, another potential future essay question that we could look at. So do social, do they have more in common or, or actually it, are there such fundamental disagreements in socialism um, that it's very difficult to find anything connecting some of the different groups, particularly if you go from revolutionary um, socialists all the way through to the third way. So See if you can find some common ground in there and explain what it is. And then also bring in and show, well, what, what are the categorical fault lines? What are the major differences? Right, a bit more explanation and stuff from me this week. So it is it is a longer video. Hope you've managed to stick it all through. Um, next week, we're going to be doing more on socialism. So if I've not given you enough, there are 
um, other videos for you to watch on the state, on different types of socialism and on socialist key thinkers. So um, go and have a look at those. Uh, and hopefully um, it will not be long until we're actually meeting face to face rather than you just watching me uh, through YouTube and emailing me. So I look forward to that and I look forward to seeing you all soon. If you have any issues, leave comments, email me and we'll sort it out and we'll get through this. OK, right. See you all soon, guys.